also competing a lot, you know, having an open mind, you know, you lose, you lose, it doesn't matter, you try to get better, you know, and also like you win, people say you, you win or you learn, but it's, it's really, it's you learn or you learn, even when you win, you should learn so that you're going to have that mentality of always trying to progress and learn no matter what the uh, outcome is. Welcome friends and family and enemies and whoever else is listening to the Matrix BJJ podcast. I'm your host, Paul Tokizolu, and I'll be hosting today. This coming Saturday, April 8th, we're going to be doing a seminar with Ethan Krellenston from the Danaher Death Squad and TriStar at Matrix Jiu-Jitsu in Kaiserslautern, Germany. And I actually have Ethan here with me today to talk about what that experience is going to be like. How's it going, Ethan? I'm good. I'm good, Paul. How are you? Dude, I'm great. I'm really excited for your seminar. We just finished up a badass private lesson. Where else are you going to be in Europe while you're here uh, visiting? So while I'm in Europe, uh, I'm going to be staying most of the time with you guys in Kaiserslautern, Slautern, training at uh, Matrix with all the guys. I'll be stopping over in uh, Paris. We're going to be doing a seminar there on April 7th on uh, Friday. Then we have the seminar the next day at uh, Matrix. And then the day after, on uh, Monday, we have a seminar in Aachen, in another gym over there. Your back attack entries and uh, triangle setups are blowing my mind. Are you going to be covering some of that at these seminars? Absolutely. We'll be covering back attacks, back takes, triangles, guard passing, uh, sweeps, pretty much everything that uh, works into my game. I will be showing everyone all the secrets. If you guys are anywhere in the area surrounding either uh, Western Germany or the area close to Aachen, or if you live near Paris, then make sure you're at one of these seminars. You can find the information for Ethan's seminar at Matrix on our website at matrix.com. So we hope to see you there. My guest today is Oliver Taza. Oliver is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Faraz Sahabi, and he trains primarily at either TriStar Gym in Montreal, Canada, or at Henzo Gracie headquarters in New York City. Oliver is one of the up-and-coming stars in submission grappling, and he recently taught a seminar at Matrix Jiu-Jitsu in Kaiserslautern, Germany. We got to hang out during that time and do this podcast. We had just finished up uh, taking a seminar from the legendary Dean Lister. That was a lot of fun. So we talked about that a little bit on this show. Oliver just competed at the Eddie Bravo Invitational Tournament. So it was great to talk to him about that, all of his other tournaments, and thoughts on training at Hensel Gracie headquarters under John Danaher, and a ton of other topics. Please welcome Oliver Taza. Oliver Taza. What's up, Paul? Oliver, we've had a great weekend training with you. I had an even better weekend training with you guys. It's great. Coming a little closer. Oh, All right. Get closer. I was a little shy. Hey, man, you don't got to be shy. It's like, it's a robot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, man. You're but, right, right. But, um, yeah, rough weekend, man. Started a little uh, hard with the uh, missing the train and everything, you know. Europe's and train are awesome, but, you know, it's... Uh, it's a little hard when you don't speak the language, but finally we made it. You know, the guys here are super cool. They gave me a second chance. Oh, of course. Stuck, stuck around and the seminar was awesome, especially the Dean today. It was super fun. Dean's a great guy. We had a great time. I now was, we're about to go eat. And yeah, chow out on some burgers. Yes, can't wait. Is uh, that the diner we're going to? Yeah, they have burgers. They have like pastrami. They have like New York food. It's crazy. It's probably not going to be as good as New York. It's, it's really funny. There's... Uh, we're about to go to an American diner here in Germany called Coleman's uh, for dinner with Dean Lester. And um, this place is literally like an American diner in Germany. Like they have the, all the staff is dressed in American clothes, mm-hmm. but they're Germans. Yeah. But they're dressed like they're in America. They're playing like American like music from the 50s or mm-hmm. 60s. Mm-hmm. It's kind of trippy. You want to hear something funny? Actually, I was in uh, when I was in Costa Rica in December that, you know, Denny's. Yeah, it's a diner in the U.S. It's pretty like casual. You know, you go there, you don't you don't dress up like very fancy or anything. In Costa Rica, though, Denny's is like a super fancy restaurant. Really? They have the same menu, same everything, same design. Um, 
but people like they have bottle service there so they'll sell i was there on new year's eve just getting some food before before any further activities and just people go there to celebrate new year's so um i don't know if it's here uh, if it's the same here but we'll, we'll see yeah <laughs> that's that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, I mean, who goes to Den- who who goes to Denny's to freaking celebrate New Year's? <laughs> Just cultures, man. Depends. But yeah, I'm excited. Thing. I'm excited. The food has been great so far. You know, it's uh, every city, every country has a different. You know, Amsterdam, it's waffles. Here, it's pretzels. Yeah. You know, Paris, it's croissant. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So every every city, every country so far has been really cool. Yeah. Loving every part of it. I mean, what even you- even considering moving to Europe one day, dude. You and me both. Let's do it. You and me both. Um, what's been your opinion on the level of jujitsu over here? Mm, so far, you know, I, I find the level in uh, in Europe very good when it comes to, um, you know, positional game. Like mm-hmm. everything that's like IBJJF, you know, with the gi, uh, they're really good. You know, they, they've caught up with, um, you know, North America, Brazil. Yeah. But, you know, when it comes to the sub only, I feel because there aren't as much as many competitions yet, uh, the, the level is still a little lower, but um, Matrix Gym here definitely surprised me with uh, the knowledge. You know, you guys have a great coach, Rene, yeah. Rene Becker. Uh, look him up if you guys are listening. And a uh, very passionate guy. If this guy had the resources we had, he'd probably be a very big name in Jiu-Jitsu right now. Uh, along, of course, other guys, you, Paul, I mean, great. Something great, like that. Great grappler. <laughs> you know, Mi- Mi- Miroslav? Miras. Miras, for Miras example. Is such an animal. And all man. the other guys just very great understanding of the game so this gym particularly surprised me but the others i'd say kind of like not a little behind you know just mm-hmm. basic entries you know you guys for you guys it's just you know second nature yeah yeah other gyms it's like wow back step into honey hole is something crazy re- yeah it's like wow i've never seen that before see when i came here to matrix that's how it was i've been training here for about seven months now yeah and uh since i moved here to the city and that's how I felt. So yeah. Backstep into four eleven. This is fucking nuts. Yeah, it's man. the same thing. When I first when I first met the guys from Henzo, they they would come down from uh, New York to uh, the TriStar to give seminars, of course, and everything. And we first saw like basic ankle locks, just backstepping, and we we're all like, "Wow, that's insane." And then next thing you know, we're we're going to New York to learn from them. So mm-hmm. you know, it's you know that's how it happens you meet somebody has a good influence on your game and then you you kind of start catching up and yeah. then next thing you know you're teaching that to somebody else and that's mm-hmm. what's going to happen here in europe in my opinion you guys are definitely catching up you know the people here like i was talking to renee i was like you guys aren't that far behind you know you guys yeah. over kind of overestimate the level in north america I know, I would yeah. agree. No offense to all my North American friends listening. But yeah, no offense, I love you guys. There's some monsters here in, in Europe. Yes, yes. Yeah, like uh, like that mirror man, training, what, three years now? Yes. Again, just monster. super technical moves, rugby player, you know. <laughs> um, just heavy guy moves, like lightweight. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of guys here, you know, that did other sports and then just transition into grappling. A bit like, I did that too, you know, I used to play football mm-hmm. a lot at a pretty high level and then just switched and from there, boom. Yeah, you you said you've only been training a couple of years, right? Yeah, it's been uh, sorry, it's been just over just over three years now. Wow, man, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it sounds like it's it's a huge accomplishment. Nothing special to be honest. You got to be passionate, you know, just a bit like your coach, passionate. Mm-hmm. Just learns everything from tape. Yeah. Um, also competing a lot, you know, having an open mind. You know, you lose, you lose. It doesn't matter. You try to get better, you know. And also, like you win. People say you you win or you learn, but it's it's really it's you learn or you learn even when you win you should learn so that you're gonna have that mentality of always trying to progress and learn no matter what the uh, outcome is i think that a lot of people throw around that whole you win or you learn but i think you're right yeah you gotta just always try to progress man test yourself and that's kind of one thing i I feel like i got my brown belt a little too fast but Hmm. people say oh now you gotta wait a couple of months you know don't compete and try to just uh you know train a lot no and just compete right away what's the difference yeah yeah you're doing, you're doing you, great yeah if you lose a, a purple or you lose a brown it's the same thing yeah. you're, you're, you're gonna learn you're gonna see what your mistake was and you're gonna correct it and boom and what go. if you win what if you win then yeah. great then awesome then you go to ebi exactly you go to ebi and you overtrain you get too excited and you get injured and then you learn your lesson and uh, there you go can you tell uh 
what how was ebi ebi was awesome uh meeting eddie bravo uh seeing how the whole uh how they run the show was really fun mm-hmm. you know the, the week prior to ebi was a little i wouldn't say stressful it's just i was a little worried i didn't know whether i'd compete or not um, yeah you mess we talking on facebook a little yeah bit. yeah it's Sucks, just it, it it was it happened on tuesday night i was training at sarah's you know great guys It wasn't even anybody's fault to be honest. It was just me floor rolling and the guys were like really cooperating with me. They were floor rolling. They understood the the fact that I was, you know, competing. No, no ego whatsoever. Great gym if you guys are ever in Long Island. But, you know, I was just training a lot, not stretching, um not listening to my body. Just really uh in my mind it was oh, the more I train the better it is, but it's not really the case. Sometimes you got to listen to your body. and just had somebody in honey hole you know and we were transitioning into like uh you know ju- just bring him down to his his butt and next thing you know my i hear a loud pop and really big pain and you know i was just trying to bike a lot i sit but not not enough you know you can't really fix injuries like that in yeah, what man. three three days four days so it was other than that don't get me wrong it was fun great experience <clears throat> you learn a lot even with with 10 minute match it's it's still a great experience loved it yeah, absolutely so cool, man yeah. i'm sure you'll be back again yeah, i will be back sure and even if again. it's not ebi you know you have trials you have worlds you know i i'm open to like all rule sets even if i don't agree with even if i don't agree 100% with all of them i'll, I'll still do them you know you got to be yeah, good man. at you got to be good at everything right mm-hmm. so you look look forward to competing being back to 100% of course try to listen to my body more now yeah so Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's one thing uh Tom De Blas said in one of his Facebook posts. Have you yeah. trained with Tom De Blas? Tom De Blas, yeah. I I um we go pretty often when I when I'm down in Jersey yeah, with uh, Gordon and Gary. We go down to Tom De Blas's gym. He's a he's honestly one of the nicest guys I've ever met. You know, just you'll see you'll see a random white he'll he'll meet a r- random white belt and just, you know, motivate him, talk to him, you know, help mm-hmm. him out. Um and and that tells a lot about a person, you know, uh, when you when you treat somebody good and you don't really need anything from him that yeah. that shows that you're you're a good person you know what i yeah. mean yeah and uh yeah. yeah he's super cool we trained there he has a great academy plenty of students very successful um big guys a lot of big guys you know i think if you have a heavy instructor the heavy students are you're going to attract heavier students so mm. that's that if you if you have a if you ever have a match against the heavier guy go to tom's gym get ready for that be a great mm. great trust session for you yeah i i would love to train with there someday i'm sure i will mm. um yeah jersey and jersey in general there. jersey you'll you'll get a very good level too you know you have ricardo almeida's gyms really good yes. too and gary tonen gary tonen's gyms yeah. over there too dante rivera um all those guys are affiliated to henzo and um you know most of them what, what they'll do they'll like the daytime they'll go and train at Henzo's and then at night they'll go back and teach or train again at night. That's kind of what when I'm training in New York this is kind of what will happen, you know, we have the 7:30 a.m. class. Yeah. We'll train there, you know, the noon class, we'll do that one too. And then at night you'll head, you'll head out to, you know, wherever there's wherever you got to go back, you know, some wherever people Wherever you're going to teach at. Wherever you're going to teach or wherever okay. you're going to train. In my case training, I don't I don't really teach in the, in in New York. Like say for example at night on a Monday I'll go to the Bronx Martial Arts. Mhm. um run by yeah Doug Pelinkovic great gym great students a lot of uh, a lot of guys you're going to start hearing about soon from yeah. that gym great atmosphere really cool guys Sarah's on Tuesdays for example you know you have good gi classes also at Henzo's at night you know, Gregory Gracie big help for me and uh, yeah so it's it's um it's good to train at Tom's and it's also practical cuz if you want to train somewhere else then you can just, you know, take the train or yeah, drive down to Manhattan. It's a little expensive though. That whole area is becoming such a hub for jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and I feel like it's it's um a lot of submission only is, yes, uh, in, exactly. in that area, yeah. Cuz exactly. it's not only in New York, New Jersey, you have Connecticut, and then you have Montreal. Florida. Yeah, Montreal, you know, you have Florida. Mm-hmm. Josh Leduc is uh running Sapatero, you know, doing a great job. Yeah. The Radius Invitational. Yeah. You have a, more and more uh finishers. Sorry, I forgot finishers. Really good one. A lot of, you know, good promotions that um that are, you know, growing growing the sport and helping uh, develop athletes, you know, give them like a platform to showcase their talent. Yeah. And that's just great for the sport, you know. More and more people are seeing Nogi. They're seeing that, you know, maybe I'm a little biased, but they see it's more entertaining. Yeah. You know, there's more action like EBI overtime rules. 
you know, there, there's pro, pros and cons to EBI overtime rules. I find like um, you can be dominating ten minutes and then you know overtime not so good. You yes. lose. It could you could be to your advantage. You know, if you can survive, you know, yes. ten minutes and then you know win in overtime. But either way, for for uh, from a spectator's point of view, it's it's fun because you understand what's happening. Oh, yeah. he escaped, or oh, his. His arm is extended. It doesn't take much to understand, you know. Once the hand is under the chin, you see the guy's face, you know, yeah. getting choked. So for for people who don't really know uh, jujitsu and I, you want to get them into it, that's definitely the the show that I'm gonna tell them to watch rather than yeah. watching, you know. IBJJF. IBJJF, or you know, just any any gi tournament or. Yeah. And my that's that's my opinion, you know. I might be wrong, or people might prefer watching gi. And I don't know, just my opinion. Gi, gi is fun if you like to train in the gi. Yeah, I love the gi. Honestly, I just love the gi. Yeah. It's just I, I don't like the um, just the restrictions. Yeah, you know, the just little restrictions here and there. But you know, you gotta adapt. Just like you know, if you're used to not reaping, you know, then don't reap. You know, when if if you're coming from another style to a new style, then you're the one who has to adapt. Mm -hmm. You can't really you can't really reinvent the wheel. You know, IJJF yeah. have been they have been around for a long time. Yeah. You, know, you can't really. Yeah, they maybe switch up little rules here and there, but you can't really ask them to change much. And in my opinion, there's not really a perfect rule set in jiu-jitsu yet. Mm -hmm. There's not really every every you know show will have like a boring match. Yeah, they'll have a match where they're stalling. You know, I just think you can get great matches too. You know, you can yeah, get they have, really they have awesome matches every yeah, time. Yeah, I mean the highest the, in my opinion the highest level is is in IJJF. Like gi, no gi, yeah. you know, worlds, black belts, even at purple belts, you can find some savages. Yes. It's just, you can find great matches. Yeah. Even there. It's just, I'm saying the majority will be, you know, more boring. Which I went on an advantage instead of winning on my submission. But, yeah. yeah. Um, like Tom said one time in one of, his, one of his posts, he said that the best people in the world do it all. Yeah. The best people in the world do ADCC, IBJJF. EBI, exactly. you know, they they can compete everywhere. Exactly, and also like that's kind of one thing that my uh, my main instructor, for us said he calls it universal jiu jitsu. You know, it should work on the street, it should work in an MMA fight, it should work with the gi, without the gi. You know, any rule yeah. set. So, uh, I kind of agree with that. What's the training like at TriStar? TriStar is fun. Uh, we we kind of uh, we kind of starting to have a a group of grapplers now that are you know. We have P.O., you know, Pierre Olivier Leclerc, you got Ethan, Krellenstein, Donald, Mike. You know, we, we're starting to have a lot of guys that are competing more and more yeah. on the, uh, you know, not only local, but not only locally, but they're, you know, flying out places, you know, they're getting invited to shows. So we have our, our own, you know, classes for grapplers, but also we have classes mixed with the MMA fighters. And that's when it gets interesting. You know, it's a different yeah. style. You know, it's a different way to grapple. You a lot know, they, more pressure, I yeah, imagine. Pressure, you know, they don't give up anything. You know, they yeah. want to be on top. For example, they don't want to, they don't want to get taken down. They don't want to get swept. You know, so it's, it's good to train with people like that because it'll, it'll push you to like work hard. You know, whereas a grappler, all right, you know, a jiu-jitsu guy, you get swept, you don't really care. You know, you'll land into maybe an advantageous position, but you know, you, you'll have to work a lot harder with an MMA fighter to get mm -hmm. anything on him. So that's when, you know, for us is a uh, black belt under John Danaher. So, you know, the teaching is kind of the same, very, uh, yeah. very precise, yeah. very uh, up to date and fun, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's, it's a good uh, way to put it up to date. Yeah, I feel like um, in Montreal or like East Coast, Canada, it's it's one of the, the better places to train uh, Nogi if you're looking to do MMA submission grappling. I feel like we're, we're up to date. A lot of us are going back and forth in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we go back, of course, we have George as well to train with. Yeah, man, that must be incredible. Yeah, training with George is, is fun. And That's we just, so we just work cool. on, we just work on what we, what we learn in New York. And usually the, it's a lot of stuff. So it'll take us maybe three, four weeks to get that down. And then we head back, you know, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's so cool. It is. It is. George, George is a great role, man. Like, uh, it's old, it's like old school jujitsu, but tweaked by John Danaher. So it just makes it like that much more yeah <clears throat> that much more accurate and that much more <laughs> deadly i guess man what what was it like when you first started training at henzo's like, at henzo's it was horrible it was horrible you get to this to this basement it stinks it's humid uh you run out of breath real quick you're getting submitted left and right i mean it's 
it's not you getting submitted because you suck. It's just the style. The style is different. Like say you you would you would train at another gym, you know you maybe get you'll get positionally like dominated. They'll dominate you. They'll pass your guard. They'll hold you down. You'll have a hard time, uh, you know, maybe sweeping or passing the guard. But Henzo's, it's it's not like that. So you can sweep. It doesn't matter. But as you're sweeping, you're ending up in a bad position. And you're getting submitted. You know, yeah. guys, their mentality there is very different. It's really submission, submission, submission. Even the MMA fighters, you know, like Liam McGeary, mm-hmm. uh, Bellator, uh, former, uh, I think, uh, light heavyweight champ. Mm-hmm. Man, you roll with them, you just dangerous everywhere. From bottom side, from bottom mount, from butterfly guard, everything. So this, the, the, the style is very different. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Took me a bit of time to adapt, but once you once you start to pick it up, like when you go back to your gym and you feel the difference, you're like, wow, that was really worth it. Getting my ass kicked was a hundred percent worth it. Yeah. You just can't get discouraged, you know. You gotta that's kind of what you gotta expect. If you're trying to, you know, you're trying to be good at a sport, yeah, you gotta man. go towards the best guys and get your ass kicked. Yeah, man, for sure. And try to get your ass kicked less and less. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun, you know, training with John, uh, all, of course, Gary, Gordon, Eddie, all these big names in sub only. It's fun, you know. It's, it's I can't, can't ask for any better, right? Yeah. If you wanna, if you wanna get better at that style, then that's where you're gonna go. What's it like to roll with those guys? Like, um, whenever you roll with them, mm-hmm. let's say it's like you're, it's after class and you're, it's your turn to roll with one of those guys. Do you have like? Uh, nervousness uh, not nervousness of like oh it's a big name but more like oh man I'm gonna get crushed nervousness because that's how I feel you know you always have those guys in the gym where yeah. you're like fuck not this guy fuck man yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get destroyed or is it like pretty flow and nice or what's mm, it like depends on each the all three of them like these three guys they each have a different style of rolling of course there's a side of a part of me either one that have the little oh shit fuck but uh, but to have a tough uh, tough roll now I've been training with them now for about a year and a half. So, of course, you get used to their games more and more. Yeah. More and more. So you, you start to figure out some stuff, but it's hell. You know, it's yeah. it's really, like, especially with, uh, like, Eddie, he'll be way more aggressive, like, on the legs. Mm. You know, very high pace. Gary's just moving in all different direction. Gordon is, like, horrible pressure. You feel like you're getting crushed. And... <clears throat> It's fun, man. You, like, you look back at the training, you know, when I'm heading back to Montreal, um, part of me is happy to leave because, you know, it's been like a rough two weeks. But part of me is sad, you know, it's just uh, yeah, like yeah. I'm going to be missing out on Such that kind of team. Going to be missing out on that kind of sick training. And also they, they'll they help me, you know, they'll help me get better to give them a harder time. You know? yes. the, the, the better your teammates get, the better you're going to get. Yeah. So they're definitely very helpful. Very, very helpful. You know, that's awesome. Uh, but don't get me wrong, man. It's not because I'm training at Hensel's that I don't want to train anywhere else. You know, it's you always got to f- see different styles. You know, like, you could learn from anybody, anybody, any level. You can always pick up little stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, training at Hensel's is awesome. It's been it's been a game changing uh, year, a game changing experience. But that's like, I, so I still want to, like, you know, learn from, you know, different instructors, see what they're what their game is like yeah, it's also be helpful for competition you know you see something um that you haven't seen in training then you're like wow what do i do how do i deal with that so yeah. that's why it's, it's good to train with different styles everywhere you know it's mm-hmm. like you know uh a hands is going to see a lot of butterfly guard you know whereas maybe uh, at unity you'll see more della riva rivers della riva it's like you got to deal with all that yeah so <clears throat> so it's good to, to you know see different styles yeah, man. Um, different people, be open-minded, and you know, just welcome everybody. You know, try to start. We get people from from pretty much everywhere, uh, all over the world, Europe, uh, Asia, yeah. South America, U.S. And it, it's good because they all have different styles, different gyms, and that that's kind of something that that helps you adapt to all the styles. Also, Hens, especially Henzo, man. But yeah, it's like Henzo's, a tourist spot. It's like the, tourist attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tourist attraction for a grappler, especially on uh, Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon is the only class, like noon class, that is no gi. So people from everywhere come to that class. There is not even... Like, if you want to do a takedown while you're rolling, you're definitely going to run into somebody. Wow. There is no room. Wow. What, and it's pretty big. It's not like we have... Small a bit man. of marrow. It's huge mm-hmm. and it's full. Full, 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 full. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's full. Awesome. Good luck taking a shower after. 
That's I mean, awesome. I mean, you shower and then you get out of the shower. So many people, so hot, you're sweating again. Yeah. And especially in summer. But I mean, it's getting better now. They put air, air conditioning, so oh, for cool, people man. who don't like a lot of sweat, uh, that might be better for you know. Yeah. People who don't like sweat. If you don't like sweat, by the way, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> probably and, not training jujitsu. Yeah, probably don't do jujitsu. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> probably do something else. Yeah. Probably play golf or something. When you were putting together your game, so to speak, who is there anyone you try to emulate? And your is there any grappler who you like to yes, be, yeah, be yeah, yeah. like or um yeah yeah at first when I first got my purple a week later Gordon came to help uh, Tom Brees for one of his fights uh, he came for two weeks and man just changed my game completely I remember having this this period of time where I was like he's showing me stuff but this doesn't work you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, not that it doesn't work but it's not working for me and that's mm-hmm. like the phase where he changed my game completely like. Just different philosophy, little stuff that I used to do that they do differently, mm. and just change my game. And a lot of stuff that he showed me for like the first year, I tried to do like exactly the same. You know, a lot of people are telling me, "Oh, you're doing a lot of stuff that he's doing, very similar." But now, you know, with time, I start. I understand their philosophy you now. I'm trying to get creative. I'm trying to yeah. you know, be a little more surprising. But if I had to say one guy, yeah, definitely Gordon Ryan. Definitely, cool, yeah, and he helps me so much. Man. He's been such help for me. I mean. If I didn't meet him, I'd definitely not be anywhere, uh, anywhere near the level that you know I am. I'm not saying like I'm a su- su- higher level crazy, but he helped me a lot. Very, very helpful. Very cool guy yeah. too, by the way. Gordon I've heard Ryan. he's awesome. He's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool awesome. guy. Very. Uh, it's it's the, the him on social media and real life. Two different two different people. Yeah. You, know, you have to understand that the dude's trying to make money, man. Yeah, he's trying to make money, so definitely, you know, he's gonna try to provoke a bit of, you know, yeah. and he gets him super fights. It gets him. It actually works. So. Makes money. You can't blame him. He makes money. He yeah. gets to do jujitsu full time. Yeah, he, you know, he gets to do that full time. Yeah. He gets to not only do it full time, he gets to train and make money from competing. You know, jujitsu. Most most people are gonna make money from teaching. Yes. You know, like seminars, privates, having uh, a school, having a school. But he's he's kind of one of the first guys to actually make money from competing and live from that. Yeah, so good money. That, yeah, it's pretty decent money. I mean, I'm not going to say no to that kind of money. So, <clears throat> and you know, in real life, he's super quiet, you know, cool guy, you know, tries to stay low key. You don't even notice him like sometimes mm. for hanging out or anything. He barely notice his presence. That's so awesome. yeah, different, different person, you know, give him a second chance. So we got just a few minutes left, then we got to go to dinner. Let's do it. But um, starving. Me too, man. Sorry. That, sem- that, that seminar was fun, though. Like, that I was a lot. Dean's seminar was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like you felt the time. He said it's been two hours and a half. I'm like, really? I didn't even see the time. Fun. Yeah. Fun stories. You know, It's always nice to, to have a seminar with somebody who's been in the game for, uh, like, what? 30 years. 20, 20, 30 years. Fucking forever. Yeah. Just, just before you, the game existed. Yeah, exactly. You he hear his stories. You hear, you hear his old matches. You, you see his old school techniques. Just a lot of fun, man. Yeah. It's cool. It's a great time. And I can't wait to see him outside the gym, see how he's like. Oh, he's, he's great. <laughs> I cannot Spoiler wait. Spoiler alert, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> he's a lot of fun. I can't wait to see that. Freaking Dean Lister, man. Oh, he's, he's great. He's very technical, a very knowledgeable guy, too. Um, if ever you guys have a seminar, you know, he's anywhere near, um, please do yourself a favor and attend the this seminar. Great, man. It'll be a lot of help. And for you, too. Your yeah. seminar was fucking awesome. Oh, I hope you guys liked it. I took man. a lot away from it. Yeah, yeah. Even though I made it two hours late to the seminar. Oh, it's not, because of it. It's okay. Oh man, that that was leading up to the seminar was horrible, man. My girlfriend and I just got lost, took the wrong train, made it late to the train. So everything that could possibly go wrong happened the same day. Got on the wrong train, wrong city in the country. We don't even. It's not like the language I don't speak and I can pick up a bit. I don't understand a single word yeah, that's being said. German is very different. You know, if I was, if I got lost in Italy, fine, you know, Latin base, I speak French, speak Spanish, Portuguese, fine, I'll get around. German, nothing, zero. And like the, uh, the person that, you know, checks your tickets and the train and everything was speaking to us for like 10 minutes straight, didn't get a single word. Yeah. Anyways, thank you. You you saved the day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You Uh, save, uh, you save the day every day you teach a seminar like the one you did thank you man that's that's really that's great that's really nice of you to kind of wrap things up so to speak is there any advice you'd give to someone who is listening to this 
who maybe wants to do what you're doing. They want to compete at EBI. Mm-hmm. They want to compete at some of these higher level events. Mm-hmm. What would you say to them? Maybe they, they're training as much as they possibly can. Yeah. You know, what would you say? I mean, the, listen, the training, training three, four times a day is an, is an option. You know, mm-hmm. don't, don't, you can't be like, oh, I can't train as much as them. I can't reach their level. I can't do what he's doing. If you can train once, twice a day, you know, have a little session of drilling and then you train at night or you have school or whatever. I started the first the first year and a half. Mm-hmm. I was full-time at school, working part-time. Yeah. Like, it's not like I started jiu-jitsu and I was like, I had Quite nothing. Everything. I had nothing else. Like, yeah. most first, first year and a half, I was at school full-time and uh kinesiology so you know a lot oh, of studying cool. you know it was a lot of biology physics uh biochemistry so a lot intense of, major for sure yeah it was it was a major so it's, it's not like i was training three times a day i was yeah. like before class i was going maybe um i was going to drill with uh, one of my main training partners donald you know mm-hmm. and at night i would come back to tristar and roll and that would be it, you know, but each session, you know, I'll take in as much as I can. Yeah. And if one, one advice is like, if you're passionate, please go, go for it. And don't listen to doubters. Ah, oh, you can't do it. You can't do this. You can't do that. Do it. Yeah. Have fun. Follow your, your, you know, your guts. It's like with anything, just start. You know? Yeah. Start. And if you, do if it. you love it and if you're passionate and you feel like this is what you really enjoy doing in your free time, then mm. go for it. Do it. Don't hesitate. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, slowly I was like, oh, the, there's an opportunity to compete there. There's another opportunity to fly out there. And then I saw like, oh, I have to drop a class. I have to drop another class. You know, then I was down two classes. And then it was passing right like 50%. And then I was like, I have to make a decision. You know? I either, you know, I'm either doing both halfway or I'm doing one of them like all the way. All the way. I think you chose the right one. You chose yeah, the one that's more fun. <laughs> yeah, especially like, you know, at, at 23, I mean, I started at like 20, almost 21. Yeah. It's like, it's now or never. Not really now or never, but you know, yeah. my, my body can take it now. Your 20s is the time to take some rest. Yeah, and I could finish my, my you know, get my diploma. My brain is still good. You know, I'm not yeah. getting punched. I'm not doing it. Yeah, and the other thing too is like, you know, if for some reason you decided you wanted to do something else when you're 30, yeah. seven years from now, you're like, yeah. oh man, jujitsu is great. But now I'm going to do something else. Like, you're fucking 30. You're still young. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You have so much time. Exactly. You know, it's not like awesome. I, you know, it was, it's still university, you know, a yeah. year and a half into my uh, my program. So there's always, you know, keep your options open. Don't just quit and start something, you know, gradually, you know, transition into yeah. into grappling full time. I see a lot of people who are white belts who find jiu-jitsu, fall in love, which is great. And yeah. then... They quit their jobs and they're like, oh, I'm going to do it full time. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's great for sure. Great passion. If you can do it, for go ahead. If you figure yeah. it out, if you figure out a way to do uh-huh. it, then great. But I see a lot of people who are white belts who are like, oh, this is my new thing. I'm going to be a UFC fighter. You yeah. Know? You got you to gotta be smart about it. I, I didn't really jump into it like, oh, okay, grappling is great. Here I, I meddled uh, at a local comp. It's right. time to do it full time. I. I started doing it. I was working part time. I was going to f- school full time, and the money that I was making, I was saving it. And like, if you wonder what I was doing as a job, I was waitering, bartending, and I was working in restaurants. So that's good. It can be good money. It was good money, and this is all money that I saved. Yeah. Now you guys, you it's fight. not it's not a cheap sport. You know, you want to compete. You want to take you a private here and there. The place. You gotta fly. You gotta pay fees. You know, at first you don't have any sponsors. Nobody's helping you. It goes out of your own pocket. So if you have savings, you see like you know. You can put some money into it. You know, you have a plan. You know, you're passionate. You're seeing results. You know, you tried competing. You see that you like it. Just yeah, slowly transition into it safely. You know, make sure you have a plan B. Um, that's my only advice, man. Oliver, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, man. Let's thank go eat some burgers. Let's go have some food, man. Thanks a lot to Oliver for being on the show and. Hopefully see you soon in May. For anyone listening, come join us at Matrix Jiu-Jitsu in Kaiser Slaughter this Saturday for a seminar with Ethan Krellenstein. Ethan is a teammate of Oliver's and he's gonna be going over some triangle transitions, some back takes, maybe some back transitions into a triangle. Like, who, who the fuck knows? It's gonna be a good time, so come check it out this Saturday, April 8th. If you only ever listen to the podcast, you might not know that we have a thriving YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash C slash matrix show your role for all those videos. We have some narrated roles, technique videos from people who have been on the show, and lots of great footage. If 
if you've never been to our website, make sure you check out mattrix.com for all of our upcoming events, all the episodes of the podcast, and show notes for each one of the episodes. So for example, this one you just got done listening to, you were like, man, if only someone was taking notes. Well, someone was, it was me, and all those notes are at mattrix.com. So check those out if you would like. Additionally, when you are at mattrix.com, sign up for the newsletter. You'll receive some great content emailed to you every week. If you enjoy the podcast, please go to iTunes or Stitcher and give us a five-star rating or a review. It's a really great way to support the show and helps us a lot. Next week, tune in for an interview with Richard Bressler. Richard is the first American to ever sign up for a jiu-jitsu class with Horian Gracie when Horian first started teaching in California. That episode, uh, Richard dropped so much so much information about just training jiu-jitsu for the past 34 years. It's a great podcast and I can't wait to release it next week. Right now you guys are listening to Vinny Russo. Vinny is one of our friends who makes all of the beats that appear on the podcast or on uh, many of our YouTube videos. If you're enjoying his music, go to matrix.com and we have a link posted to his SoundCloud page where you can find the rest of his work. Additionally, thanks to the band Waves Overhead for producing the theme song for the Matrix podcast. If you'd like to download the rest of their music and even give them a financial contribution, go to wavesoverhead.bandcamp.com. You'll be able to find all of their music there. You heard a little bit of their song to make amends at the beginning of the episode and you'll hear the rest of it right now.